Hi, this is Evan Hutcherson, CPA, also known as Foundation to Cloud, and I wanted to go over a, a couple of things uh, related to QuickBooks Desktop and sending invoices out. So this is probably mostly related to construction, but other industries might be able to um, take some of this uh, or find some of this useful as well. So I want to go over three quick situations today. Um, one is billing charges to customers that were not actually incurred by the company. So, you know, usually we write a check, well, I'll sh we write a check or we enter a bill. So this is, this is a, what a bill looks like, as you probably know. And we enter the vendor, the amount, the account, the cost code, and the, um, the customer and it shows up as billable. We do the same thing with a check. So we're inputting these, we're gonna pay this bill, we already paid the check and it's showing up as billable to the client um, because we had paid for it and it's a pass through. Now what if we what if we want to bill a client for something that we're not paying for? So an example of that might be we own a piece of equipment that we're using on the client's land, an excavator. And that equipment, I mean, we, we purchased it, but we're not currently getting charged for it. We already own it, but we want to bill the client for the use of it. So there's obviously not going to be a bill. There's not going to be a check. So what we have to do is create a new... Uh, a new a new customer and I've called this customer equipment use so just for example if we go to like crushed stone $800 right here okay so say we want to bill job number 24 one two three Natchez trace $300 for for the use of equipment we already own the we already own the equipment. We can't bill it out with a bill. Instead, we create this check, or we can create a journal entry of some sort, where we're putting the correct cost code down, we're putting the amount, and we're billing it. See, it's showing up as billable. Now, of course, since we're not paying for it, we don't want to screw up the bank reconciliation, so we need to keep this a zero right here, so it doesn't affect the cash balance. In order to do that, we have to have a negative. Um, a negative amount for the same number that we're billing out to zero it out the same cost code and everything and just put it under um, equipment use that way it's you know obviously we're not sending an invoice out to equipment use so that's not going to affect any invoices and this way we can show when we select an invoice for um, job number 24 this amount will show up we're not screwing up the bank rec and also, like as an added bonus, I guess, with this, you can go back to your uh, your uh, profit and loss by job and take a look to see how much you've earned with the use of your equipment. So that's, now you can do the same sort of thing with payroll. So with payroll, I know there's different construction software programs that can, that can cost those out to different jobs, but QuickBooks Desktop, you have to kind of work work around the box so with payroll um, you want to on a general ledger you always want to show payroll wages and payroll taxes that match up to your 941s your w2s and so forth so we can't really directly put this payroll towards specific jobs um, because then if, if you expense a certain job that means you're not expensing the payroll account. So you want to at least select the payroll account, put it through that, and then you can create another job called payroll job cost and do the same sort of thing. So you know, you pay John Doe $1,000, 250 in payroll taxes. Um, so you want to bill out that 1250, but you want your GL to show payroll wages of 1,000, payroll taxes of 250. So you put that directly in payroll costs but then you create a check or a journal entry and you put um you know you put whatever general labor is the cost code maybe whatever you want to use 
and then that amount and that job and then you just do a negative one for payroll job cost. So same sort of thing. Um, another another quick thing to go over is if there is a um, if you do a if, if you have a credited expense on a bank statement so you purchase something and then you, you got a refund for it because you realize you didn't need it or whatever might be the case you're gonna see under the deposits a negative amount that's not a or I'm sorry a positive amount that's not an action that's not income or equity it's just a negative expense so what a lot of people do is they'll just go to make deposits receive from whoever put in whatever account and you know put we can just do the same account we used earlier and the same job I don't remember what job it was but we'll do um, job 10 3.80 crush stone let's say we got a refund for ten dollars if you save this it'll show up correctly on the GL so it'll go to direct costs I mean it'll be a, a negative ten dollars to direct costs but it won't show up on the um, sub ledgers the job cost ledgers so if you go to reports uh, job estimate versus actual you go to that particular job you want to be able to see all of course all the expenses and all the returns and refunds that go to each particular account code that one was crushed stone if we double click on this and drill down that was an old one that wasn't the one I was doing let's delete that because we did it for ten dollars not eleven dollars um, see you don't see the ten dollars in here a negative ten so that doesn't show up on the job cost codes in order to fix it you do what I just did with that eleven I was actually just showing someone else how to do that and that's why I use that number um, in order to fix it you would of course delete that ten dollar deposit and instead you would go to credit card charge and you can do this with a check too I just prefer to use this because I have a dummy credit card you put in ten dollars, or actually no I'm sorry you put in zero um, would be 03.80 still let's just do it we'll just do it for 50 just so we can easily see that fifty dollars um, shop costs or I'm sorry customer 10 and of course this will actually be a negative 50 all right it's a negative credit card charge which means it's a deposit so you put in the the um, the deposits that are refunds as negative credit card charges because a regular credit card charge is of course not a deposit it's a it debits the account so this will correctly put it in the system as a negative 50 and then to fix the issue if it was coming out of the bank account you would just go to bank account and you would put in a positive 50 and don't put it under that customer just put it under overhead that way the credit card rec doesn't get messed up because it's zero 50 minus 50 is of course zero so nothing happens to that your bank account is increasing by fifty dollars and your expense is decreasing by fifty dollars so if we save this it's right here this fifty dollars so that's and this is from the same report the job cost uh, job estimate versus actual so it's now in this job report so you just basically you when you're putting QuickBooks uses items as cost codes not expenses so as you can see this is an item not an expense and that's why it's showing up on the job cost report when you're doing the deposit it doesn't allow you to choose an item just an expense or actually just a deposit which you can make an expense but you can't choose an item so that's why it doesn't show up on that and that's why you have to do this in order for it to correctly reconcile the bank account not mess up the credit card and correctly show this refund in the job cost reports so that was the second thing I wanted to show you the last thing is um, it's pretty basic but 
for whatever reason, a lot of people have some issues with it. Uh, it's in regards to creating invoices. So if I go to an invoice, and I go to job 10 again, and I look at all the items that I can add to the invoice. So this is a co uh, cost plus. So you're adding these billable items and then you're putting a builder's fee on it maybe. And you see these right here. Let's just take this one for example. 2159.28. If we search for that amount 2159.28 Sorry, it's gone a little slow here. All right, this is the this is what's being billed. Okay, so you see job ten two one five nine point two eight in this cost code account, and this little thing is marked billable. See, it's automatically check marked as billable when you input it in as an item. And that's why when you select that where we just were, it would show up on the invoice. Now, if you, if you, per, if you do some like type of warranty work or you just do something where you don't want to bill it out, you simply just click that and then it won't show up on the invoice. But we're going to show it on there. And let's go back to the invoice. All right, let me try this again. Customer invoice 10. Here it is. So we select. I mean, usually, of course, you would select all your expenses, but for purposes of this quick tutorial, I mean, I'm just going to pick a couple of them. And they just get added on here, and then you add a builder's fee or whatever, however you want to invoice the client. But sometimes you add these bills on here, you realize there might be one that shouldn't be billed out, or you want to bill it out at a future date, or whatever might be the case. This is just what I want to show you. If you happen to delete this, or first, if you save the invoice, if the invoice is saved, and then you decide you want to delete this transaction. You save and close, yes. You just got to make sure that you go back to that transaction, the original one, where it was billed out and billable, and check it again. Because if you take a look at this, since you saved that invoice, even though you deleted it, since it was originally saved, it automatically comes up as being billed. That's the, that's what it looks like when something's been billed. So, so just because you deleted it, that does not change the fact that this has now already been billed for purposes of QuickBooks. So you would need to go back here if you wanted to bill it out at a later date and just click on this again. Just make it billable. So those are the three different options you can choose with this billable box. And just make sure when when stuff becomes or is put on an invoice, it's going to show up as already being billed. I know that usually won't matter because once you put something on an invoice, you're ready to bill it out. But there's a lot of times when you know, people are messing with invoices and changing things, and you just got to make sure that you are accounting for each transaction. So that's all I really wanted to show you today. I hope, uh, I hope that helps a little bit uh, for future QuickBooks input. Um, thanks a lot. Bye.